Welcome back, adventurers. Welcome to the Travel Book Club. If you have no idea what this book club is all about or even what book we're reading, click this link above and watch the video quickly that explains the Travel Book Club and we'll get more information on it. If you have not read the book or if you do not plan on reading the book, you can absolutely follow through and watch this video. It is still a travel vlog. It tells you all about my recent trip to Canary Row and the John Steinbeck Museum with my Aunt Judy. Maybe you'll be motivated to go ahead and read the book afterwards. I'm not really sure what kind of format I want to do for this travel vlog. This is sort of like a tester to see if anybody is interested and then to see if this format works out well for everybody. In the comment section below, feel free at any point to say, this is not working for me, this is working for me, any kind of suggestions you have. And and we'll see what we can do. This is our travel book club. I want you to feel like you can interact with me. If you have any great Pacific Northwest books that you love and give a good description of an area or that area has a nod or tribute to the writer, then I would love to hear them. So put them in the comment section below. Let's get this thing started by just basic. Give me some information on how you liked the book. Did you like the book? I loved the book. I mean, that's part of the reason it was my first choice. And I felt like it was a really good place to then go travel to after. Afterwards, we found a lot of things on John Steinbeck. John Steinbeck is the hero of the Monterey Salinas area. Let me tell you, he is everywhere down there. For me, this was a great choice for a travel book club. But what did you think? It's not a very long book, and it is definitely feels like a collection of short stories almost more than, you know, one long very in-depth story. So give me some information down in the comment section below about how you felt about the book overall. So let's get started on this video. Feel free to respond to other people's comments and make a conversation out of it. I will ask you, please, please, please be respectful of everybody else. Everybody has their own opinions and that is great. And that is what makes a book club fantastic is that you get to hear all these different opinions. I want this to be fun and light. Sometimes the story matter is not necessarily light, but the conversation should be thought provoking and inspiring and maybe even a little reminiscent, but it should never be disrespectful or rude. Let's get started with the video. The first part of the video is Judy and I going to the John Steinbeck Museum, followed by the self-guided tour along Canary Row, and then you'll see a couple little clips from Monterey Bay Aquarium. That was really meant to kind of be inspired by Ed Ricketts and the Pacific Biological Laboratory. Ed Ricketts was the person that inspired the character of Doc for John Steinbeck, and so uh, Ed Ricketts is very important not only to Canary Row, but he was really, really important to John Steinbeck. He was a huge part of Steinbeck's life. So that part is really just to show you a way in which Ed Ricketts has inspired the marine biology laboratories and the research that goes on continuously now through in Monterey. Thank you so much and hopefully you'll enjoy our tour of John Steinbeck's Canary Row. So today we've got a new person on the channel. This is my Aunt Judy. You often hear me calling her Hootie. Because Hootie that's, who? Yeah, that's my nickname for her. And show them the reason why. Get up close oh. and show them. Oh. Hootie loves Ow. owls. So today is all about our travel book club. I hope you guys read Canary Row. We're really excited to be here in Salinas and we'll be going to Monterey later on today. So Hootie, tell me about your experience with Steinbeck. I learned about Steinbeck in college at Mission College. I had a teacher. This is a hilarious story. She'd come in and she was an older lady and she loved Steinbeck. In fact, she got her PhD on Steinbeck because she wrote uh, about Steinbeck. The Sea of Cortez, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. So she'd come in and she'd have a wig on and every day it would be cricket every single time and I'd love to go in there just to see what her situation was going to be like during that time. <laughs> so she's the one that got me interested in Steinbeck, uh, the Mice of Men, the Grapes of Wrath, there was a Falcon one, I can't remember which one that one was, but so I love Steinbeck books. Yeah. Are you breaking things over there? <laughs> making fire? Oh look at you, you're a fire maker. I'm a fire maker. <laughs> Wow, Hoodie, look at you. That's like that's a lot of work, isn't I'm it? I'm strong. I'm doing the bellow. That's what it's called, right? Bellow. <laughs> oh yeah, the bellow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there it goes. Keep it going, Hoodie. We've got to stay warm through the winter. I'm tired now. <laughs> Let me see your arms. So they they wobble. Oh yeah, strong. I'm yeah. strong because I work She's at the bellow. Tough. What do you like about Steinbeck so much? I just love his 
his books of histories that it very detailed. Yeah. It also kind of helps that we're kind of from this area, so it also feels a little nostalgic in a sense, yeah. I imagine. Yeah. Knowing more about the area. I'm from California originally, so I've been down to this area quite a bit, and Judy lives in California right now. Yeah. So I was born and raised in San Jose, so. Yeah. yeah. So it, for us, it feels almost nostalgic as well. Hootie, don't get on that thing. The waves are horrible. They're oh, huge. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, Hootie. Oh, they're a big Quick, careful. There. Here comes a big wave. Oh no. <laughs> The power of cinematography. <laughs> I really think that Steinbeck is so descriptive and his writing and uh, appeal to many different audiences. I feel like a lot of people can get a lot out of his writing. And you can get into the story really easy. Yeah. His characters are great. He yeah. has makes some really interesting characters. Yeah. We're gonna get started. There's a little video at the beginning that gives you a 10 minute introduction to Steinbeck. And then we're gonna go into the actual museum. So any parting thoughts, who do you? No, let's hope you enjoy the day because I know we will. Yeah, we're excited. And it's a nice day. It's a little windy. It's not raining at least. Yeah. Because it's been cold here in California lately. It's been really cold. Yeah, so we don't like that. But no. let's get going. Ooh, Monterey, here we go. This is all about Canada Row, I think. Mm. Oh, look, it's like Doc's lab. Can you imagine going out and picking all those every day? Frogs. <laughs> Judy does not like frogs. We'll make over to you 25 frogs for a buck. We'll actually deliver it into your hands. Uh -huh. 25 frogs for every bag of groceries you can let us have oh, and you yeah. can come to the party too. That's because the party. Oh, what a mess. What a mess. Do you guys, how, what'd you guys feel about the party? <laughs> how'd you guys feel about Mac and the boys after that? Write that down in the comment section below. <laughs> I thought it was very depressing. Lee Chong brought the frogs for four cents apiece and sold them to Doc for five cents. He made five frog profit on each dollar worth of frogs. Oh, here's Ed Ricketts' Doc's bed. The deer wanted to live and be happy. Clothes, food, both fresh and canned liquor, tobacco, fishing equipment, machinery, boats, cordage caps, pork chops. Lee was round faced and courteous. He spoke stately English without ever using the letter R. He lived well, and he had the respect of all his neighbors. And he had fat, chunky fingers. Yes, they do that exactly on the, the mat in front of his... Yes. Look how hot Ed Ricketts was. I had never seen a picture of him. Oh, is it supposed to be Lee Chong? Where? Right here. That's not a very flattering picture. Oh, and is that Mac and the boys? This must be at the party, then. And then these are the members. Malloy's lived in these pipes. They were living a happy, poor life, but then his wife started wanting things. And like the things she wanted were these, she wanted drapes, which they just hung on the wall because they had no windows. So you know the term, mo money, mo problems. And I guess that was the case in Cannery Row. What do you guys think? Do you think that you'd rather be poor and live a happy life like Mac and the boys? Or would you rather be wealthy and live an easier life? Like, I guess Doc, Doc lived, you know, he was, he had money, but he had a lot of stress. He drank a lot. Yeah, that was a great experience at the Steinbeck Museum. You liked it, right, Judy? I loved it. The whole point of this travel book club is to talk about Canary Row, but a lot about a book is about, is the author and what the author was going through when they wrote it. And so coming here to the Steinbeck Museum was fantastic because we actually got to learn more about Steinbeck and where he was in that time of his life. He had just finished his trip with Ed Ricketts to uh, the Sea of Cortez. And it was almost sort of a memorial for Ed Ricketts because he passed away, sadly actually, by getting hit by a, a train. I really feel like this was a wonderful experience. I would highly recommend this museum. It's, it's a really nice, well laid out museum. And if you love Steinbeck, this is a great way to uh, let us know a lot about Steinbeck that we didn't know. And all the books and movies we want to see. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Walked out with two books. Yes, hootie. All right, so we're in Monterey now. Yes, we're in Monterey. At the Cannery Row. Road. And what I found online, which was pretty cool, was a walking tour that is Fort Steinbeck's version of Cannery Row. And the locations were based on the places and the people that Steinbeck bases characters off of. So on the book Cannery Row. Yeah, yeah. so the book Cannery Row. So, because he, he actually based a lot of his characters off of actual people. So we're gonna go see some of the places where the old stores were, some of the old bordellos. I'm gonna link this walking tour down below in the description so that you can follow it if you wanna come out here and do it. It's just something I found online. It was pretty neat. And we're gonna go follow that and see what we can see as far as actual Cannery Row information, you know, from the book. As you can see, Cannery Row is uh, basically super commercialized now. 
it is not like the cannon row of the John Steinbeck era. So we're gonna start at the beginning, which is down at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. And when we get there, we will show you where we're at and what it has to do with Cannon Row the book. When's the last time you came here, Hootie? Oh my God, it's been several years now. What significance does Cannery Row have for you? I love Cannery Row. Well, my first marriage. Ha -ha. <laughs> this is where she had her honeymoon. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we shouldn't uh, remember that. Actually, I remember the honeymoon because I remember the restaurant Sly McFly's. Oh yeah. It's really cool. Which is actually still here. They still have Sly McFly's. The first stop is the Hopeton's Cannery. And this is at what is now the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Right. Monterey Bay Aquarium occupies the site now, but the 1916 to 1973, this was Norwegian Fisherman Net Hopeton's Cannery and the last one to close on the waterfront. Okay, so this, you'll see its logo on the round barriers that separate the sidewalk from the street. This is the cannery that was here during Cannery Row and that was described in the book. Those are the smokestacks from the cannery when it was here. Hope to pray. The next stop is going to be La Ida Cafe. So and one of the bordellos. Yes, and that was at 851 Cannery Road. Yeah, which is now that bakery over there, Ostino's. La Ida was uh, a place where the writers and poets came into her shop. Later on, it became, after Steinbach uh, passed away, she held all his memories. Bill, yeah, yeah, sorry. And so she housed it here in her shop. Yeah, so, so she basically, what they say, she was like the queen of Cannery Row. Yeah, and she formed a foundation in here. In, in, uh, yeah, which was cool. And she took care of people and did a whole bunch of really cool things for the area. Yeah, and she started doing the historical landmarks here yeah. in Cannery Row. Yeah. <laughs> okay, our next stop is going to be uh, Wing Chong's building. Wing Chong Market, which is 35 Cannery Row. Lee Chong's store was based off this place, yes. including the guy. The actual guy was Wan Yi, and Lee Chong was based off of Wan Yi, and he was a really, really big part of the Cannery Row uh, culture at the time. Wasn't he? Yeah, and he opened the market in 1918, and he did a brisk business in dried squid for a while. Oh, that's oh, cool. Yeah. Do you think he did a brisk business in frogs for a while? Probably too. And he also <laughs> did um, bootleg uh, oh, bootleg yeah. boots back in his time. Of course. During the Prohibition era, probably, yeah. he was was making a pretty penny, I imagine. Yeah. Especially here. You can still see the name of the building um, stencil on the side of the building. There's the Wing Chong building. Now it's a candy place. Yeah. Okay, so this is Doc's, otherwise known as Ed Ricketts, the actual Ed Ricketts lab. The Pacific Biological Laboratory building. Really pretty cool that this is still here. And I heard that they actually give tours inside. They only have like once every third Sunday or something, third Saturday. If you look online, I'm actually going to link their tour website here. We go down this way. If you go around the corner, I think you can actually see. Yes, look at this. Oh, yeah. So this was Ed Ricketts, AKA Doc's Backyard. And when he collected all the samples, as you read in the book, they would keep them down here. And he used to have big parties up, as you guys know from the book, he would have big parties up there on the top of the second floor. And he was really attractive. <laughs> That's all I'm focused on. <laughs> if she can bring him back, she would. Yes. He's a scientist too, that's even better. Yes, he was, and she would go collecting with him as well. Oh, I would. She would, without a doubt. <laughs> maybe he has a grand, great, great grand. Oh, maybe he does. I bet you, Ed Ricketts is down here now. Keeping an eye on us? Walking around, collecting. Collecting. Can you imagine going down there and collecting? So these were kind of cottages that the people that were working in the canneries would actually be living in. They're really cool. And sometimes, not right now, but during some parts of the year, they actually have these open so you can go in them. Up here along the biking path, past the row houses are Mac and the Boys. So this is a picture that is dedicated to Mac and the Boys. Which one's Mac? Mac is the one in the white. He looks cool like Mac would look. What do you Which think, Cody? The one in the white, right there. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, the one that looks cool in the white. This one, yeah? yeah, that one looks like Mac to me. What I would visualize Mac to be. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, I think you're right. Okay, so this is the Steinbeck Plaza. Here's a little bust of our buddy Steinbeck. 1902 no, to 1965. No, 
not as handsome as Edward gets. Well, you're a little biased. <laughs> So the next stop we have is Bear Flag Building. Oh, so that is where, uh, you know, the Bear Flag Restaurant was the Bordello, where, what was her name? Dora. 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 Beloved Dora. Doc never ever visited her establishment because he almost felt like it was incestuous. Like he wouldn't go there because those were kind of his people in a sense. He felt fatherly to them because I think he, because he acted like a doctor and had to, in the book. He acted like a doctor and had to pretty much take care of all these people. So that's where we're gonna head next. I don't know if you wanna head there next or just keep moving down the street. So, and then go back that way and hit it. Okay, maybe we'll head on down the street some more and then come back to the Bear Flag restaurant. Yeah, because we have Ricketts Memorial at the intersection of Wave and Drake. Okay, is that it? And then, then we have just the Cannery Row in a nutshell. Oh, that just talks about Cannery yeah. Row. So that's it, huh? Yeah. Wow, we actually, Went through this pretty quickly. We did. Okay. We are here at the memorial of my man, Ed Ricketts. Unfortunately, he passed in a really actually disturbing sort of way. He was in his, his car, car stalled on the train tracks and his car was hit by a train. Did his car run out of gas or it just stalled? I just said it stalled. I'm not sure if it said it ran out of gas. But I know you like him better. Untrue. He's looking away from you like he's like, Amy. Amy, I love you. He's dreaming of me. That's what his eyes say. That's what his yeah, eyes say to that's me. That's why. Look at he's salivating right here. <laughs> for me. So this is the Bear Flag building, and this was the inspiration for Dora Flood's Bear Flag restaurant, Bardello, where Dora and the girls would live in this. It wasn't actually this one. There was a Lone Star restaurant that was down across the way from Doc's shop, but this is kind of the inspiration. This building for the Bear Flag restaurant and the Bardello. Remember Shelly and Nathaniel from the Chowder Crawl video? So they're here again with me today. We're gonna go to the Monterey Bay Aquarium. The reason I wanted to go to the Monterey Bay Aquarium, aside from it being a really big part of Cannery Row, is that it kind of reminds me of Ed Ricketts uh, Pacific Biological Laboratories, which I'm actually wearing my Pacific Biological Laboratory shirt today. A travel tip, it is a very crowded weekend because it is Memorial Day weekend. The lines actually, there's a long line here, but then the line to get tickets is way along the building. So travel tip is before you come, buy your tickets online because the ticket we're in, which is the actual ticket holder line, is way faster than the purchasing ticket line. I'm a little nervous about how crowded it's going to be on the inside. Hopefully we'll get the experience. We'll get to feel what it would have been like in Doc's laboratory. Penguins! And Nathaniel's excited about seeing penguins and otters. You know, sea otters are great pirates. They throw a lot of cannon fodder. I, I'm not sure about that one. Like he's blushing. Oh no, he's that he's sunburned. <laughs> sunburn. <laughs> Introducing my very talented nephew, Nathaniel. He is um <laughs> very skilled in the way of octopus balancing. Pretty much this is a thing, huh? In the actual Monterey Bay Aquarium, they actually have a little section that's dedicated to Hopeton Cannery, and this represents what the cannery would have been like at the time. And then they have some memorabilia as well as pictures of what it was like, of what the cannery was like in its heyday, as well as some informational videos, and kind of getting you an idea of what they would have done with the canning. Kind of cool. The Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, the pod that they sent down, they actually named Doc Ricketts. I really believe that he was a big influence on creating the Monterey Bay Aquarium here because the Pacific Biological Laboratories was a big deal here in Monterey for a very long time, so kind of cool. It's nice finding all these little, you know, nods to John Steinbeck's Cannery Row. Let's do recap. 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 What did you think of Canary Row, Woody? It's awesome. I think there's a lot more to see than what we did today. Yes. Actually, surprisingly, there's a lot to do. Yeah. And we didn't get to see the Wax Museum at all. So apparently, we've heard that if we come in this building and go to like the Wax Museum area, there's some kind of like 
Steinbeck Museum in their mini Steinbeck Museum. So from the looks of it, this is actually a wax museum, but it's apparently all about John Steinbeck's Cannery Row. And there's little books here, Spirit of John Stein or Spirit of Monterey. So I think it's closed because you have to get your tickets at the as seen on TV, which is closed. This is another element of John Steinbeck's Cannery Row that you could come, you know, experience if you wanted to in this building, which is really cool. It's a neat building as well. No, and we didn't realize that there was history down there. Yeah, so. I kind of thought it was just like a wax museum where you run around and... Tourist. You know, like those celebrity wax museums. Yeah. There's always more things to do, more things to find out. What did you think of seeing all the stuff that we saw from the book? Fascinating. Yeah. I didn't know that John Steinbeck wrote a lot of books. Yeah. So what did you guys think of this trip to Canada Road? Did it inspire you at all to want to come learn more about Steinbeck, read more of his books? Hopefully you want to kind of come see it and kind of look at more because... I'm telling you, we even barely scratched the surface. Yeah, today. yeah. Um, and it, there's, I feel like, just in general, Canary Row has so much history. It would be nice to take a, an actual tour here or something. Yeah. When you're here looking at it from this perspective, it's very commercialized, but there's so much about this area that's very fast, good, good interesting history. Yeah. I think I'd rather pick another day when there's not as many tours, so maybe yeah. a, a a week during the weekday when it's not a holiday. And weekend. not a holiday, yeah. 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 Because it, it was very crowded today, but yeah. we got around just fine. We were able to find parking easily, actually. Oh, easy. Yeah. yeah. And so that was, I feel like that was a really, it wasn't that long to go around to the, all the different places on that, that walking tour list, no. though. How did you feel about Steinbeck's, like, characters based on seeing all the things here? What did it make you feel? Actually, it makes you feel like you're part of them, I think. You mean, like, coming here makes you feel like you're, you are more part of the story? Yeah, yeah, it does. You know, and, and it's, he was very close to the people he knew. Yeah. So, I mean, it makes you feel like you're part of that. Yeah. Clip, Actually, you know? that's kind of a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like with with, with uh, Ed Ricketts mm -hmm. and seeing his laboratory and then kind of also seeing what was <laughs> Lee Chong's. It just makes you kind of feel like this was a little community and a little family. And of right. course, when you read the book, you almost feel like it's a family. Yeah. Like even though they're all, not strangers, they're all people that live in a city, they all are going through all these hardships together. And they're connected together. They are. And so, and it feels so small there. And kind of when you come here and you go to those different places, you feel like you could see what that family is like, that exactly. little community. Which is interesting considering there are so many people here today. And it's so crowded and it's a whole bunch of strangers and tourists. But you also kind of feel a little sense of like home belonging in a yeah. sense, that, that family element to it, which you get from the book. So that's a really good point, Hootie. Yeah. Look at Hootie. She's using her smarts. My brain. Our brains. This is what reading does for you. Yes, it does. It <laughs> makes your brain stronger. Yes, expand. And it, and it expands. It's going to explode out of our it's heads soon. It's going to explode soon. <laughs> we really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, click the like button. Click the like button below. Because you're liking my hootie here. You better like my hootie. Hootie hoo. Yes. And then if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe. We just hope you had a great time like we did. Yes. And click that notification button so you'll know the next time we have a new video. Thank you so much for coming on this trip with us. And thank you for being here with my hootie.